Taken as a young boy, somehow he came upon the scroll of Jeremiah while in captivity. And so here's a prophet reading a prophet. Mm -hmm. And God revealed certain things to Jeremiah that he didn't reveal to Daniel as a prophet. Mm -hmm. Daniel discovered them by reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. A prophet discovers things by reading the Bible. Isn't that up? <laughs> Odd thing. So what does Jeremiah instruct Daniel in? He instructs Daniel in the length of the captivity. Mm -hmm. In Jeremiah 25.11 and Jeremiah 29.10, it basically says the same thing, that this Babylonian captivity is going to last for 70 years. We know that Daniel interpreted 70 literally. Mm -hmm. We know that Daniel interpreted 70 as literally because in Daniel 9, he, he, he mentions this wonderful event <coughs> in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, observed in the books the number of years which was revealed as the word of the Lord to Jeremiah, the prophet, for the completion of the desolation of Jerusalem, namely 70 years. Mm -hmm. Now, that gives me reason to interpret Bible prophecy literally. Amen. But you, you will be viewed as a nitwit. <laughs> if you get to Revelation 20 mm -hmm. and tell them that a thousand means a thousand. That's right. Because a thousand doesn't mean a thousand. And they're thinking, doesn't mean a, a literal thousand. Why not? Seventy meant seventy. Mm -hmm. uh, they can't do what they do with the second coming with the first coming. Mm -hmm. Because the first coming already took place literally. Mm -hmm. So when you read Micah, and it says that the Messiah is going to be born in Bethlehem, they don't sit and say, okay, well, what does Bethlehem really mean? <laughs> Can't mean Bethlehem. It's got to have a deeper spiritual meaning. You know, it means Bethlehem, and they know it means Bethlehem because that's where it happened. Amen. But you see what happens. Uh -huh. There's, there's a, a, a mass, massive amount of inconsistency mm -hmm. when it comes to the second coming. And, and some of the things that revolve around the future, future for Israel, and uh, things along those lines. So uh, just think about those things. Think about how, how Daniel had to view his own circumstances when it came to the length of the captivity. He could have said, well, 70 doesn't mean 70. I guarantee you, he hoped it meant 70. Because <laughs> it was just about over. That's right. He lived most of his life in captivity. Mm. How much longer is this going to be if it's not 70? <coughs> so I, I think we have every reason to go to the scriptures and when it comes to the prophetic texts, mm -hmm. to take them literally. And by the way, that is a dispensational distinctive. Amen. It Amen. is. People that don't hold to that particular way of interpreting scriptures mm -hmm. don't see it that way. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that we uh, lovingly discuss mm -hmm. and uh, try to encourage them to think about it from another perspective but uh, in the 70s we were on the winning side we're being <coughs> very challenged right now <laughs> we were challenged by the uh, interpretation that these things are going to take place mm -hmm. literally mm -hmm. and I think what that does it, it it's it it just robs people of hope. Mm -hmm. it, it robs people of what Bible prophecy is designed to do. Mm. How do I know that my, my loved ones who died in Jesus are okay? Mm -hmm. How do I know that? Mm -hmm. You know, if you can't take it literally, you can't take the whole idea of what Paul is using to encourage people about their dead loved ones, how do we know they're okay? Mm. I think there's more ramifications to this than, than is sometimes realized. That's right. So my, my challenge to you, especially you younger ones, if the Lord doesn't return and you have your health as a believer, you have many years ahead of you, mm -hmm. don't neglect Amen. Bible prophecy. Amen. Because you're going to run across people that are reading tarot cards and having their palm. I'll give you an example. Back in the 70s, um, 
76, the, the, the bicentennial, and it was huge. We wanted to set up a table at the arch. And I was going to be, uh, we were going to do this in conjunction with another friend. And we, we were going to, and it cost a lot of money, but it would draw hundreds of thousands of people. And we were going to set up a table, and we were going to hand out literature. You know, just had a very nice table and several people manning it. And so we had to send in samples of, of what we wanted to, to pass out. And we were rejected. Mm. So they didn't let us. We went down there anyway and passed them out. And because there's about three or four tables of palm readers down there. And they were accepted. Everything is okay if you want to get your palm read and get swindled out of your money. You know, being told things that are ridiculous. But they rejected the idea of having uh, gospel tracts. Mm -hmm. And I really wasn't all that surprised. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really too surprised. Disappointed, yes, because it would have been a great opportunity. But we were down there passing out literature anyway. But uh, when it comes to scripture and the truth of the Bible, people want to know the future. They're wasting money talking to people on the telephone. <laughs> the people on the other line couldn't pick them out of two people up, if two people were standing, they couldn't pick the one they were talking to. They don't know anything about you. But they're going to tell you all that you want to know. What do you want to know? I'll tell you what you And they've been doing it long enough to know what people want to hear. And, you know, I remember back, astrology was so big. Mm. It may still be, I don't know. But in the 70s, you know, you used to buy those little booklets of astrology anywhere, at a drugstore, uh, anywhere. And I thought, you know what you need to do? Just buy about five of those and switch all the covers. <laughs> you know, so the Aquarius becomes Gemini. And they'll read that thinking, this is who I am. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. And they're reading the wrong one. <laughs> That's how general it is. Uh, this is specific. This has specifics. Amen, in it. brother. This has specifics. In it. And, and it just grieves me when somebody, when, when whole systems of interpretation basically are telling you, you, you just need to neglect this. Mm. You just need to neglect this. My challenge to you is don't neglect it. Amen. Take the time to study it. It's profitable. Yes. It'll, it, it'll really increase your hope when you start learning about the future. Mm. Take it literally. <coughs> Trust God. He's got the future in control. Just believe what he says. And I, I, I do believe that the Lord will, will bless you for it. Amen. Well, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the prophetic word. Thank you that there are still some people out there writing very, very good books on the subject. Mm. And but thank you most of all that you have chosen to reveal much to us about the future. Help us not to neglect it. Help it to be a hope producer a joy producer, a holiness producer, and that which just keeps our head above this earth, to seek those things which are above, not the things that are on the earth. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.